Welcome everybody to this lecture in international trade policy. So you can see here the structure of this chapter. So after a short introduction, I would like to talk about the effects of a tariff in the small country case. Then we switch to the case of a large country. And in the end, we will talk about the effects of an export subsidy. What are the basics related to tariffs? Of course, it is the importing country which uh, puts a, a tariff in place. We have to distinguish specific tariffs and ad valorem tariffs. A specific tariff is a fixed charge for each unit of good imported. For example, $3 per barrel of oil. An ad valorem tariff is a fraction of the value of the imported good. So, for example, like a 25% tax rate. Tariffs are the oldest form of trade policy. For example, already in the times of mercantilism, tariffs played an important role to restrict the number of imports. Tariffs have more or less two objectives. Tariffs are or were an important source of government income and another objective is that the, that the domestic economy, domestic industries, should be protected. With respect to the first objective, I said tariffs are or were an important source of government income. Yes, in the good old times, it was the case that this was an important um, source of government income, also for like industrialized countries, but this is not the case nowadays. So today, government budgets are financed by coming up with a tax, not a tariff. But for some developing countries, it might be the case that this is still an important source of government income. Furthermore, we should keep in mind that, for example, President Trump said, like, I would like to buy, uh, I would like to build a wall between the Mexico and the US to support the border. And he said, in case that Mexico, Mexico does not want to pay for this wall voluntarily, he would come up with a tax. Uh, he would come up with a tariff. He would put this tariff in place so that the Mexicans in the end would pay to build this wall. So also in the narrative of this uh, international trade policy of Trump, government income plays an important role. The importance of tariff has decreased in modern times. What is uh, more important today is non-tariff tariff barriers, for example, import quotas or export re restraints. When it comes to the terror scenario, this is very important because it serves as a baseline trade policy measure. All other instruments will always be compared against the tariff scenario, so it's very important that you understand the tariff scenario. We'll follow a partial equilibrium framework and concentrate on that market where the tariff is introduced. The effects on the rest of the economy are out of our focus. What does it imply? So for example, when we look at the steel market and one government introduces a tariff for steel, we are just looking at how is the steel industry affected by this tariff. We are not looking at how the automotive industry is affected by this tariff. We are just looking at that market where the tariff is introduced. In international trade policy, the procedure is always as follows. We start the analysis by looking at the scenario where free trade prevails. So you can see here on slide number five, the equilibrium with free trade. We have a downward sloping demand curve 
an upward sloping supply curve and the horizontal line is the international price. The international price is lower than the equilibrium price that would prevail in Artaki. So we are looking at here at one country which is importing goods from the international markets. When you uh, compare the quantities which are produced within the economy, which is equal to the supply of 100 goods, and the demand, which is equal to 190 goods, the difference between demand and supply will be imported from abroad. So the amount of imports are equal to 90 goods, which are imported here. When it comes to the consumer surplus, uh, we have to think about it is the area above the price line and below the demand curve. So the green area here is consumer surplus. Producer surplus is symbolized by the yellow area. It is the area below the price line above the supply curve. So, producer surplus is the yellow area. Now, we have to think about how that changed in case that a tariff is introduced. Like here, it is assumed that we have a tax rate equal to T. Uh, the price increase from 5 to 6 because this um, tariff is introduced like the tariff rate is equal to 20%. The price within the country is increasing and therefore it has an impact on the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied within this economy. The quantity demanded will decrease from 190 to 160 and the quantity supplied is up from 100 to 120. This implies that the quantity imported is down from 90 to the quantity of 40. So less goods are imported from abroad. Now I would like to check uh, what are the consequences for consumer surplus producer surplus and the welfare of the society. Consumer surplus is defined as an area above the price curve below the demand curve, so, so the green part is consumer surplus. As you can see, consumer surplus is lower than before. Producer surplus is larger than before. So the area below the new price line and above the supply curve is larger than before. The yellow area has increased. The area in blue symbolizes tariff income which goes to the government. So once more, uh, the tariff rate is equal to like one currency unit. 40 units are imported, so the blue area symbolizes government revenues. You can see here that two triangles are not covered yet. These uh, triangles are marked with uh, red ink, and they symbolize the welfare loss to the society. Let's mark the areas which are affected by the introduction of the tariff. We mark it with X, A, C and B. This is very important because we want to compare the situation where free trade prevailed and the situation where a tariff is in place and we want to find out what are the net benefits of the tariff. We have to check how much did producer surplus change, what about government revenues, and we, have to, we also have to think about how the consumer surplus reacted. 
the producers gained the area X, government revenue, they gained the area C, and the consumer are losing the area X, A, B, and C. Therefore, the net benefit of a tariff is equal to the two triangles A and B. The net benefit of a tariff is negative. The two triangles A and B, they get special labels. Triangle A is the so-called production distortion. This distortion pops up because the introduction of a tariff leads inefficient domestic producers to produce too much of the good. The triangle B is labeled consumption distortion because of the fact that the introduction of the tariff leads consumers to consume too little of the good. So these two areas, A and B, these triangles, they have special labels. It becomes clear that our welfare analysis contains interpersonal comparisons. So we are, we are comparing the effects on the consumer side and the producer side. But the gains and the losses accrue to different people. Therefore, the Pareto criter criterion is not met. Maybe the evaluation of a tariff depends on how much we value a dollar's worth of benefit to each group. So maybe it makes a difference whether we talk about the tariff on wheat which is used to produce breads for the general society or um, poor parts of the society, or whether we talk about the tariff on a sailboat, which will only affect the rich people within one society. We do not want to make this distinction here, but in the real world, this kind of argument pops up. Furthermore, we have to think about that the role of the government is ambiguous. In our welfare analysis, we assumed that the area C is not a welfare loss. It is a case that consumer surplus decreases by the area C, but government revenues increase by the area C, so that this rectangle C is not a loss to the society. It's not marked in red ink. Therefore, we have to make an assumption. What is the government doing with these kind of revenues? And here we assume that the government, for example, will re redistribute these kind of government revenues to the society. For example, by coming up with a te tax cut with respect to the income ta tax. Or the government is low lowering the value added tax. So we assumed here that the government is redistributing the government revenues which stem from the introduction to the tariff to the general public. But this doesn't have to be the case. So for example, when we think about the situation in Africa, it might be the case that the government will, or the politicians, will just use the government revenues and they buy golden toilet seats for thousands of euros and then we would also evaluate the uh, rectangle C as a loss to the society. But here in our welfare analysis we assume that the government is redistributing tariff revenues to the general public therefore it is not a loss to the society. So now we have talked about the introduction of a tariff in a small country case. In the next part, we'll talk about the effects of a tariff in a large country case.